What is up guys? I am Banwell and I'm back again bringing you guys another Windwalker Monk YouTube video. Today I'm going to be walking you guys through how to set up your kills in 2v2 and 3v3 arena, specifically with the Banwell bomb. So I want to apologize firsthand. I had some problems with my stream when I recorded a lot of these clips and some of them are lower quality than others. If they're the lower quality things, I'm going to walk you through them anyway. So it's not that important, but you'll still see the general setup. So in this clip, we're going to go ahead and get a perfect one shot on this resto druid here. Notice he has, he's off DR in four seconds. He has no bark skin available and he has no trinket, which is the perfect scenario that you want. Before you do the banwell bomb, you always want to get their trinket. So here I'm going to emblem wall, in cap, touch of death, Summon my images, I'm going to leg sweep as the in cap ends, Fist of Fury, Rising Sun Kick, Whirling Dragon Punch, and the Dress Gath Trinket, and the Touch of Death procs to kill him. The Death Knight grips me, even if he gripped me earlier, the De Druid would have died anyways. So that's a perfect example of your standard Banwell Bomb. No Trinket, no Bark Skin, no other defensive cooldowns that can be pressed while in a stun, and a clean 100 to 0. Next, I want to show you guys what you can do in a slightly different scenario. In this clip, I'm going to be fighting a target that's using Relentlessness. Relentlessness decreases the effect of all crowd controls by 20%, which makes the Banwell Bomb slightly awkward. If you do the Banwell Bomb the standard version, what's going to happen is there's going to be a global after the stun ends, before the touch of death procs, then a Mistweaver Monk could press Cocoon, a Druid could press Bark Skin or Iron Bark, or go Bear Form, and a Priest could press Dome. So what we're going to do in this scenario is we're going to use our touch of death first because he's relentlessness. Now watch what happens here. We're fighting a death knight, so it's very important that I don't get gripped off the target. I wait for him to go out of line of his death knight. I pop my emblem and my wall behind the pillar. I root him first, put my touch of death up, in cap him, stand out of line of the death knight to avoid the grip, sweep, Fist of Fury, Rising Sun Kick, Dress Gath, Whirling Dragon Punch, and he dies to the Banwell Bomb. As you see there, if I didn't put the Touch of Death on before the in cap, he would have had a global after the stun to press Cocoon. Because I did my go properly, and I put the Touch of Death on, and then in cap immediately after, there's no global that he gets to press, gets a clean 100-0. The next clip, I'm going to show you guys a positional trick that you can use on your monk to land yourself some kills. This is everyone's favorite streamer, Grayson, getting Banwell Bombed out of line of sight of the pillar. Big Fist of Fury, Dress Gath, Rising Sun Kick, Whirling Dragon Punch. The Touch of Death kills him. Now let's go back just a second and watch how I get him into this position. The Warlock has the ability to kill me in this game, or more importantly, prevent my go. So I drop my Ring of Peace early, dropping Grayson out of line of sight of his Warlock. I come back here and the Warlock is over there. Now, because I'm in this position, the Warlock has no way to get a CC on me. I have my end cap up, I apply my touch of death with emblem wall, I stand out of line, I see the warlock run around the pillar, so I post out this way, so he still can't hit me, dress gath, fist of fury, whirly dragon punch, I move again, and I get the full go off. By lining the, the destro lock in this game, it gives them, me zero opportunity to get interrupted. As you can see, I'm constantly repositioning my character to make sure that I'm lining the destro lock the entire time. Not getting stopped on your go is very, very important to getting successful Banwell Bombs. And the easiest way to do that is with your positioning. Now, let's see how the Banwell Bomb looks in threes. This clip is going to be a little bit different because it's going to be two parts. I'm going to show you how we set up to get the trinket and get a kill window on one of our targets. And then I'm going to show you the actual kill itself. So in this first clip, you'll notice this rogue has trinket coming off CD. The rogue mage is training my Mistweaver. So I fly back to peel for my Mistweaver. His trinket's about to come off cooldown, and he's really overextended from his priest. So if we can ring a piece him out of line of sight like we do here, my Mistweaver knows I want to trinket stun him out of line. He misses the second rop, but we do get the trinket from the rogue, which is really what we want. The double ring of peace, forcing him out of line of sight of his priest, lets us force his trinket from him. And now, one minute later, when I have leg sweep off cooldown, we're going to be able to land the kill. Now, one minute after that last go, I now have my Touch of Death available. They're still training my Mistweaver, who uses his cooldowns defensively. The Rogue still has no Trinket, and we're going to go for the kill on him. I apply my Touch of Death here, but knowing that I need to CC the Priest in order to land this kill, I'm not going to in-cap the Rogue. I go and I put my in-cap on the Priest while the Rogue chases my Mistweaver. I fly across the map back to my Mistweaver, land my Sweep with three seconds left on the Touch, Pop all my burst on the rogue here. My Mistweaver drops the ring of peace to knock him out of line of sight. And we clean 100 the rogue. Although that's not the perfect standard Banwell bomb. It is a Banwell bomb nonetheless. Just using the cooldown slightly differently to ensure that the kill has landed there. 
The priest is too far away in an in cap. By the time the in cap ends, he can't get to him. The Ring of Peace moves him out of line of sight. The Touch of Death Leg Sweep combination is still just the same, and the overall burst rotation is the same as well. Next, I want to show you guys some defensive plays for Windwalker, specifically in threes. Rogue Mage is one of those comps that has so much damage, you can die at any moment. So your positioning is very important. Fighting Rogue Mage, especially with a Priest, you have to be very wary of every kidney shot. In this first kidney shot, they pop Dark Art Combustion on me, as well as the Bike Trinket, and I lose a lot of health very quickly. This results in the AMZ, my Emblem, and my Karma. Notice I'm only using my Emblem here and saving Fortifying Brew for another defensive. They knock me out of the AMZ, they break through my Karma, so I Flying Serpent Kick Port, and my Emblem gives me just enough health to stay alive in this go. My Mistweaver tops me off and is able to save Cocoon. Now, they don't have a go for a few seconds, and I'm able to push back out. I disarm the rogue so he can't get a kidney shot on me and stay out of line of sight of the mage to do my damage. I rop this rogue backwards, leg sweep him, and pop my burst here to get some offensive pressure. Now that my go is over, he pops cloak evasion, I want to get out of line of sight of this mage before I get kidneyed. Watch where I get kidneyed on this next go. The rogue pops vendetta on me on the kidney and if the, my monk is in a full sheep. If their mage was here to connect on me, more than likely this would be my trinket in this go before they've used blind. But, since I make sure I get kidneyed out of line of sight of the mage and out of line of sight of the priest, I can sit this full kidney despite the fact that it's Vendetta. At the end of the kidney shot, this rogue's gonna meld and then cheap shot me half. I in-cap the rogue defensively, kill the tendy, my mystery reports back and tops me off. Now the rogue faints and is forced to run away. I'm gonna do some more damage to the rogue, saving my burst for our next setup. There's passive fisting, staying at the pillar because I don't want to get kidneyed too far away from my monk. This go, I get kidneyed just inside a line of the sight of the mage, and they full blind my monk, so I need to trade my trinket. I trinket, flying serpent kick away, dispel my poisons, and sprint roll, and I'm across the map healing myself the full through their blind CC chain. The rogue comes back to me, I disarm him, and he's forced to run away. Now that we have survived their three biggest goes, Combustion and Dark Arc, Vendetta, and now their Blind Go, I can start to play more offensive because they're out of their offensive cooldowns to trade. I come in, double sweep the Rogue and the Priest, or the Rogue and the Mage, I'm sorry, and get big damage on both targets. We get an in-cap sweep from our Mistweaver on the Disc Priest, who Trinket and Fears the Mistweaver. They start to swap to my DK, knowing that I still have cooldowns back, such as Karma, and I have Wall of Emblem as well back now, and I'm still pumping the Rogue. I want to set up a Banwell Bomb on the Rogue on my next leg sweep, but I have to wait for my sweep to come off cooldown in 30 seconds. They drop a barrier, I drop my ROP to keep our team offensive. By dropping this ROP on the barrier, we're going to force Pain Suppression on the Rogue and Rapture out of the Priest, only because we use the ROP offensively. That's another example of how you can use ROP offensively to create more pressure for your team. Pain Suppression's now over, the Priest has no cooldowns, they can bust on my Death Knight, who trades out his Icebound Fortitude, we've got Cocoon and AMZ in line with Combustion, and keep our pressure high. Now the Rogue has almost no cooldowns left, the Priest has no cooldowns left, and the Mage only has Ice Block remaining, so I start to get pressure on the Rogue. It looks like he's going to walk himself out of line of sight, and I'm going to be able to get my Banwell Bomb off, but I get kidneyed here behind the pillar, out of line of the Mage. The Rogue pops his cooldown, I roll back to my Mistweaver, Pop my emblem wall defensively, priest pushes in, the rogue runs away, and I see that I have an opportunity to kill the priest 100 to 0 here. I set up my Banwell bomb, some of my images, leg sweep the end of the end cap, fist of fury, rising sun kick, dress gath, whirling dragon punch, and the priest dies 100 to 0. He wasn't quite at 100% health here, but it sounds a little bit better to say he was. There is an example of how defensive play, when you need to play defensive, paired with offensive play, when it's my time to do damage, is a secure way to land kills and victories in 3v3 arena. This clip is a nice little 1v2 we pulled off against my friend Voyu in st on stream the other day, and I want to show you guys some of the highlights of it that make this 1v2 possible. First off, the clip starts with me pre karmaing this kidney shot, which otherwise I would end up dying in. So he cloaks the karma to go offensive, but it doesn't matter because it's just going to keep me alive long enough to live. I flying serpent kick away, dispel my poisons, and heal out of line of sight. The rogue gets a restealth, comes towards me, and I drop a rop defensively on the pillar to stay alive. All I'm trying to do here is live until I have my Banwell Bomb, which is available in 5 seconds for my Dress Cath Trinket. I get around the pillar, the rogue steps to me, I kite back, emblem wall, and get trinket on this stun, in cap, touch of death, some of my images, I try to get the double sweep here, but don't hit it. Fist of Fury, Rising Sun Kick, Dress Gath, Whirly Dragon Punch, Reverse Harm, and the Touch of Death procs to kill the rogue. 
I got back out of line of sight and healed myself back to 80% health while simultaneously getting some damage done on the priest. Now, I have to make one really offensive, great play here to end the game. The priest has fear coming off CD in 10 seconds. Every priest always wants to fear your Fist of Fury to stop the damage. I'm fully aware of that, so I wait and hold my Fist of Fury till there's 3 seconds left. I Fist, and as the fear comes off cooldown, I port pre-porting the Psychic Scream, allowing me to keep 100% uptime on this guy and make sure he can't just spam out through those Shadow Men's to top himself off. We miss our kick, we land the legs, we pass the touch of death procs, and we kill the priest. And that's a very clean 1v2, and it's simple to land as long as you know how to do your touch of death and make a couple out plays using your port, your kick, your end cap, and your ring of peace. Well guys, that is all I have for you guys today. I hope this video is helpful for you guys setting up your own Banwell bombs and landing those clean 100 O's in Arena, as well as helping you guys improve your 3v3 gameplay. Drop a comment in below if you have any questions and let me know what type of videos you guys want to see next. Do you want more 3v3 gameplay? Do you want a one-shot montage? Do you want clips of more 1v2s? And just let me know what you guys want. Make sure you like and subscribe and make sure you follow the Twitch, twitch.tv slash and I'll see you guys next time.